I'm Dean Cipolla and this is the Azure Academy. There are a lot of exciting things happening lately around Azure and one of the areas that I've been asked a lot about in the last several weeks is around Azure Blueprints. So let's go over to the Azure portal and you'll remember from our policy video in the governance series that Blueprints can be found in the Azure policy section. And before we get into some of the new stuff that's here now, let's quickly look at the Azure documentation. So under Products, we go to Management Tools, and over here we find Azure Blueprints. So Blueprints, just as a high level again, are a way to craft an environment. So we need to have certain permissions, policies, resource groups, and then possibly even resources deployed within that as a fixed structure, a blueprint. And this is because we want to reuse this kind of layout or architecture over and over. So this doesn't require any extra tooling, extra environments and portals like with DevOps. So they each have their place. And Blueprints is again centered around environments. With this in mind, what's new? Well, some of the samples that are here in the documentation are what we're going to talk a little bit about. There is a, a Blueprint standard that's out here now for deploying ISO 20. 27001 as a shared standard and then also 27001 around different workloads. Okay, and we can take a look at some of these architectures and we're going to set some core infrastructure in place, building a virtual network in our subscription with the Azure firewall, a bastion host, a couple domain controllers, and then a app service environment with Azure SQL. So if this was your architecture and you wanted to make it compliant with ISO 27001, you could deploy this blueprint. And there are other blueprints in here as well. So let's take a look. Now this is where we would start off with creating a blueprint and when you hit create the experience is now a little different than it used to be you could start off with a blank blueprint and this would be things that we've already covered and just build it up yourself or now you can use some of our samples so let's take a look at each one of these so first we'll start with a resource group with some RBAC so we'll first give it a name and then we have to store it in a location so I will choose to store this at my highest management group that way I can share it anywhere and we'll hit our next for artifacts and you see it's all pre-filled out for us so what is it that we're getting well inside our subscription we're going to deploy two resource groups one for prod and one for pre-prod and there'll be a contributor right that's given here so we'll specify a group for that an owner right and a reader right in pre-prod now once you're happy with this you can go ahead and hit save it as a draft but I'm going to hit discard here and I'm going to go back to create and then let's look at the next one here of common policies. Again, we need some kind of name and I'll store it in the same management group and hit next so we can take a look. And this one inside our subscription is going to deploy a policy at the subscription level where we're going to apply a default tag and its value to all resources. And then inside a production resource group that we'll create, we'll deploy two policies to have allowed locations for our resources and the allowed resource types. So I'll discard this one as well and go back to create and look at our basic networking. And I've entered our standard information here and we'll hit next. Now this one, as of today's date, which is March 17th, does have one thing in it that you need to watch out for, and this will be updated soon. Over here in the ARM template, the resource that we're deploying for our virtual network has a hard-coded location for East US. So if you try to deploy this blueprint, to another region besides East US, you're going to have a issue. And that is because our NSG here, if we do a search by typing in Control F, and we type in location, the location where the NSG is going to be deployed happens to be the location of the resource group. Now, when you assign your blueprint, you choose what location that resource group will have. So let's say you pick West US. So if you do, the NSG will try to deploy to West US and it will fail because part of that depends on the location of this virtual network. So the way that you can fix this is you can go in here to edit this 
and just put in your square brackets for a function. Resource group is the particular function and then all functions need parentheses. So there's our open and close. And then we put dot location. Okay, and doing this will get around that problem and I've already made a pull request to the GitHub for this so it should be updated soon and you won't have to worry about this anymore. So let's hit save there. And then of course you could save this as a draft again, which I will discard. And I'm doing all of these discards because I've already created them. So let's hit create again and we'll take a look at our shared services. We'll give it a name again and we'll go to our artifacts. And this is a big one. All right, so we're deploying a lot of policies here at our subscription level. And then we're deploying several different resource groups and we're storing uh, some of our log analytics over here. We're deploying that and some network security groups, Azure Firewall, network, routing tables, NSGs, a key vault with multiple secrets, a jump box server, and a pair of domain controllers. And this follows our sample that we've got here. So there's our same architecture our core services of Azure Policies, Azure AD, because we do use a Azure Active Directory service principle, a key vault, the Azure Security Center also gets deployed with Security Center Standard, our Log Analytics Workspace, our Virtual Network, encompassing our firewall, our NSG, some rules inside our firewall, creating a gateway subnet and a firewall subnet, along with a shared services subnet for our jump server, and our Active Directory servers with a route table and another NSG. And we're adding a bunch of different roles for all of our different people who need to monitor and manage this environment. And then similarly, for the blueprint for our workload, we see we have that same base structure that's here, and then we're just adding on top of that an app service environment with its own key vault and Azure SQL in its own dedicated virtual network. So going back to our blueprint here, we're going to hit discard because I've already done this. So if I go to my blueprint definitions, I've already taken the time to take those blueprints and create them and publish them from the base model with the exception of the basic VNet where I made the changes that I already showed you to update the location. So let's go into the ISO and this is related to the shared services and let's hit assign the blueprint. Now there's a few things in here that are important to point out. First is that we need to deploy this to a subscription and we're going to need a name. Now this is showing up automatically as the name and it is marking off as red because I have already completed this deployment. And the reason I did this ahead of time is because this deployment itself took about 40 minutes. And that is understandable when you consider all of the stuff that we're deploying and how complex all of that is. So I'm going to just save this here with a different name just so we can keep moving. And then you can give it a version. And then we come to the lock assignment section. Now I do not have a lock deployed as part of what uh, I have here so far. And if you choose to do a lock, they come in two flavors. One is to not be able to delete. And this will actually create a deny resource policy. And then you can also choose to make it read only, which is more restrictive. That means not only can no one delete, no one can make any changes. So I'm going to ignore that for the moment. But this managed identity section, this is important that we address this. So back in our documentation, underneath the concepts section, we have dynamic parameters in a blueprint. So let's click on that. And down here in the section on using secure string and secure object parameters, this relates to how we deploy resources like things with a key vault secret and some kind of version. And this is definitely inside our blueprint down here at the bottom. Okay, we're for our jump server and for our domain controllers, we're using a key vault resource ID, a secret, and a version of that particular secret. Now, when you do this with a blueprint assignment, the thing that you have to keep in mind is where that key vault is located and where you're doing the deployment. 
And that's what we have in these two sentences. So if you are doing a key vault that is in a centralized subscription or a subscription other than where you're doing the blueprint assignment, then we are going to have a little feature that we've got to enable. So if you do nothing, you get a system assigned managed identity. And we see that back in our blueprint. By default, it is system assigned. If your key vault is in another subscription, then you need to use a user assigned managed ID. Where can we find this? Well, in the Azure portal, you can either type managed ID up here, okay, and there's our managed IDs, or you can find that in all services, and there's our managed IDs. Now, I've got it pinned over on the side here, and the way you create one is very simple. We just go to add, we give it a name, and then we store it in a particular subscription in a resource group in a location, just like any other Azure resource, and we hit create. Okay, so I'm going to need to select Select this if I choose to use a key vault that's in a different subscription and then hit the ellipse to select the particular ID that I want and hit add. All right, now if my key vault is in the subscription where I'm doing the deployment, I can just not worry about this and use the system assigned managed ID. The other thing that we need to point out is here in the organization name. The organization name must be unique. This is because the organization name that you specify here is going to be used to build a log analytics workspace. And those are like storage accounts. The name needs to be globally unique. All right, something like MS Dean Blueprint. And then down here is the Key Vault section. And here's where we're setting up a Key Vault secret for our jump box. And we need to store a password or SSH key for that jump box, as well as our domain admin credentials. And then we have here an Azure AD object ID. So this is referring to an Azure Active Directory application that is stored in Azure AD. So let's take a look at that. So here's Azure AD and I go to my app registrations and I pick any particular app or create a new one. And inside there, once it's created, I will have an object ID. I would copy this and go back to my blueprint and I would use that. Okay, and that's uh, going to be used to be able to manage and maintain this key vault. All right, and then we come to the section for building our jump box and our domain controllers, and there are three bits of information we need. And the first item we need is under properties, and that is the resource ID. So I will copy this. Back here in our blueprint, I will paste in the resource ID for the vault for both of those. And then we need in our secrets, we need the name of our particular secret, which in my case is default password. And I'll paste that in the secret namespace. And then we also need the version. And you can choose whichever version of your password that you want. I happen to have two. And I will use that and paste that version in here. And there we go. We are ready to deploy. So you just hit assign and you're off to the races. And again, this will take about 40 minutes. I will hit cancel on this because I have already done this assignment and it was built successfully. So let's see what we got at the end of the day. So the first thing that we have was our resource group related to our policies. So under policies in that resource group, we could go to our assignments and we have our policies listed here as blueprint policy. And there's our allowed SKUs for our virtual machines. And down here, the resource location and resource types. And so we see that that all worked out just fine. And then we have our virtual network. And this, if you recall, was deploying a virtual network. And until this is updated, you've got to go in and either specify that you're going to use the resource group location for your virtual network, or you're going to be OK just deploying this to East US. And this deploys a virtual network, and inside that virtual network, we get a subnet, and inside that subnet, we are attaching our NSG. So that all worked out. And then we also had the one for our permissions, and this is our prod and pre-prod that were spelled out for us. And under access control, the roles assigned to this resource, and in prod, we only had one, and that was our contributor. And in pre-prod, if we look at our role assignment there, we also had a backup contributor 
distributor listed here, as well as a uh, owner that was listed here, and also a reader role, okay? And as well, we had a virtual machine contributor. So all of those got assigned just as I had specified. And then finally, we had the ISO uh, related blueprints. And we can see here that these are our network resources. So we had our virtual network and a route table and a public IP for our firewall, an NSG for the DMZ and one for shared services, the firewall itself, our DDoS protection plan that's enabled on our network security group and application security groups for our domain controllers and our jump box. And then inside our next resource group related to this is our log analytics items. So there's our workspace and a storage account for long-term storage. This is our shared services key vault. So we're storing our keys in there. And then we had our resource group for our jump server and the resource group for our two domain controllers. So all together, we had this uh, successfully deployed and that took us about 40 minutes. So if I go into that particular assignment, we can see that everything was assigned successfully. And as you can see from the list, there was a lot of material that was deployed with that and lots of Azure resources. So I hope that you've enjoyed this look at the new blueprint samples that are in the Azure policy area. Don't forget to click that like button and hit the notification icon so you can be aware of when our new videos come out, which is about once a week. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a comment below. Happy learning.